Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So tonight, we're going to talk about dog whistles. We're running into them a lot all over the place, certainly on the Internet. They're even in government, and government seems powerless to stop it any kind. I mean, if no government is best, then, well, maybe no government is best. Anyway, dog whistles are statements that give the speaker plausible deniability. They can say, oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. That is not what I meant. I didn't, I didn't mean that. You're taking that the wrong way. And then they start to gaslight you. Look at you. You're seeing racist everywhere. <laughs> it's not what I was saying. It's crazy. But even though they can deny it to a certain subset of people, well, they heard it and they know what it means because it's a core belief of that ideology. It's something that really, really matters to that group. I use dog whistles all the time in my videos, constantly. I don't use racist dog whistles, but I use dog whistles to other groups. I used one already in this video. Now, when the average person hears, you know, if no government is best, then no government is best, what they hear is, well, there's no perfect government, right? To a certain subset of people, if no government is best, well, then no government is best. It's a dog whistle to people who believe in a stateless society because it's better not to have a government. That's how dog whistles work. Odds are you didn't even hear that. But it was there. And there were people in these comment sections, I'm certain, that heard it. That's how they work. So first you have to be able to identify them. And some of them are very, very obvious, and we're going to use some of those as examples. But you treat them the same way you treat a racist joke. I don't get it. Explain it to me and force them to drag it out and explain it. You focus on nothing else in that comment. When you see one or you hear one, you don't address anything else. You zero in on that dog whistle. I, I don't know. What is a globalist? Because then they have only a few options. They can pretend they don't know, which nobody on the internet admits they don't know something, or they can come up with an alternate meaning, or they can own it. Those are the options. But either way, it doesn't matter because you don't let it go. You continually hammer on that one statement and get them to address that one thing. A really common one is, well, you know black people are responsible for a disproportionate amount of murders in the U.S. Okay. So why is that important? Well, I, I just said that they're, they're responsible. So their skin tone makes them kill? Is that what you're saying? And you just force it, drag it out. I mean, that doesn't really make sense. I mean, unless you're actually saying that black people are subhuman. I mean, that's certainly not what you're saying, right? And by this point, they can't gaslight you anymore. They can't pretend that's not what they're talking about because they've already hit that. They've already gone too far you can expose them and then you can expose the propaganda because most of these uh, dog whistles are like that there's no nuance <laughs> they're very simple pillars though there's something that everybody in that community recognizes and if you can destroy it well then not the person you're talking to but everybody else in the comment section sees it everybody who heard that dog whistle who might be starting to believe that can start to identify it for the bunk that it is you know, by that same data set, people with brown eyes are <laughs> responsible for a disproportionate amount of murder. Should we base policy on that? Is that a reason to develop a prejudice? It's a spurious correlation. It obviously, <laughs> skin tone or eye color doesn't relate to whether or not you're, you're more likely to be a murderer. That's stupid. That's like saying your astrological sign determines whether or not you're going to be a killer. So you drag that out, and then you go further with it, and you point out that, you know, I mean, if you're going to use statistics, you at least need a complete data set. And this is a complete data set. It came from the Department of Justice. Yeah, but what's it, what, what are the statistics of? Cleared murder cases. Not all murder cases. So it would actually stand to reason 
that the people that are better at crime are the people that aren't on it. Because, well, it only focuses on a very small group. It focus, focuses on those that were clear, that, those cases. And get ready to not sleep at night. I know that because of CSI and shows like that, everybody thinks that the murder or the clearance rate for murders is really high. In reality, it's like 50 to 60 percent. 40 to 50 percent of murders go unsolved. But it's even worse than that, really. Because that only includes murders where an investigation started. If the person just became a missing person, it's not figured in at all. Let me ask you this, going by stereotypes, who is most likely to be able to make a body disappear? What do they look like? Where do they live? What do they sound like? Me, right? I mean, let's be honest. Hillbillies, rednecks. I mean, that is what it is. Those are the people that are most likely to be able to make a body just disappear. And you know, when you bring this up, what you get is, well, you know, you're saying all of this, but it's in their culture, it's in their music. That's the one that always follows it up. Really. You know, I learned a thing or two from Charlie, don't you know? You better stay away from Copperhead Road. Steve Earle. Now, granted, he is outlaw country. This is not mainstream. That song is about booby-trapping pot fields to kill DEA agents. It's really what it's about. Um, so you can't really count him, though, because he's... Not really mainstream, but what about uh, the lawman said he found some tracks. He went up there looking and he never come back. That's Montgomery Gentry. Pretty mainstream. Not just is it talking about murdering somebody, it's talking about killing a cop and disposing of the body so it's not found. That criminality, there it is. <gasps> it's throughout country music uh, with you in that tarp because Earl had to die mainstream. Now I know country music disowned them because they spoke out against a Republican, but it was there. Um, <laughs> just take him to the knee, or take him to the swamp, knock, or take that rascal out in the swamp, knock him to their knees and tie him to a stump, let the rattlers and the bugs and the alligators do the rest. It does not get more mainstream than Charlie Daniels. Murder and disposing of the body. Well, I wonder where that Louisiana sheriff went to. <laughs> Jerry Reed. Murder of a cop and disposing of the body. It's a pretty common theme, actually. <laughs> but I guess it's just in our culture, right? And I know right now, there's a whole lot of rednecks and hillbillies out there going, well, you know, in almost all those cases, that was really justified. I mean, they real, I mean these people had it coming. That's literally the point. So, dog whistles, in general, can be defeated. You just have to know what they are. And then you ignore everything else they say and you focus on that. Because you're not trying to convince that person. Nobody gets their mind changed in an internet debate. But the people reading it do. The other people do. You might be able to reach one of them. You might be able to save one of them from going down some racist road. Engage those dog whistles every chance you get. And you forget about everything else in that comment. It doesn't matter what they call you. Ignore it. Just focus on that dog whistle. You destroy those pillars, those things that hold up the rest of the ideology, those things that are so commonly believed that everybody can recognize them. You destroy those. And that ideology comes falling down. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.